CD Ken is now in its third year, fourth year, just, just started its fourth year, we're in May, aren't we? Uh, we're spending something like um, two million pounds a month of DFID, Dutch and other money on research and technical assistance and knowledge management on climate compatible development. We're working in something like 50 countries, 13 of those very intensively. And as we go on, we're learning a great deal about two critical questions that we're going to be discussing today. Uh, the first is, what does it take for the leadership of a country really to take climate change seriously? That's a question you can ask uh, in many countries. You can certainly ask it in our 50 countries, but you could also ask it in some countries you might see by looking out of the window or looking across the Atlantic or elsewhere in Europe. Um, is it a brave thing for leaders to take climate change seriously or is it actually a win-win? And where are the options and opportunities for them? And what drives leaders to take climate change seriously? And if they do take it seriously, what stops something as big as we would like to see happen, happen? Um, are there some opportunities that we don't know about or some blockages uh, along the road? I remember being in a dinner once with a, a um, Secretary of State for Climate Change, I won't say which one, who said, you know, you have to understand that for every company that comes to lobby me about the importance of green technology and green growth, I have 10 companies standing outside the door lobbying against. And it's understanding that balance of forces and the political economy and how we deal with it that is part of what we want to discuss today. We're launching a paper written by Karen Ellis, who's on the panel, Al Ali Cambray, who is over here, and Alberto Lemma, who is also in the room somewhere over there, which is called Drivers and Challenges for Climate Compatible Development. Um, Karen will present the paper shortly, and there will be two discussants. Uh, the first is Emma Tompkins, who's a reader at Southampton University, a great expert on environmental issues and on climate in particular, who's been carrying out research on the idea of climate compatible development, and I'm sure we'll use that in her comments on the paper. Um, and uh, Claudia Martinez, who is the CDKN country coordinator for Colombia, who will come in by video and talks very interestingly on the video about what drives policy interest in climate change in Colombia and what some of the constraints are. Uh, we're then, then going to have an open discussion, and there are a number of people in the room who are involved in this process. Um, Ari Hutala, who is the head of research for CDKN, Pippa Halings, who leads the work on climate compatible development. Um, and um, um, at the end of the discussion, Sam Bickersteth, who's the chief executive of CDKN, will round it all up for us. Uh, he's going to do the work, tell us what we've learned, and also tell you what we're going to do with this information. Because we're being live streamed, uh, of course, everything you say will be on the record. Uh, so, as I always say, we encourage you to be indiscreet, uh, but remember that history will know that you've been indiscreet. Um, there will be a record of the meeting, uh, both video, audio, and written within 48 hours on the ODI website, uh, and we will finish by 2.30. I think that's all I have to say. Uh, welcome again to ODI. This is ODI Climate Week, by the way, so there are a number of events this week uh, on climate change at ODI. Karen.